and welcome to the What is Truth radio show. Dr. Michael Caesar here in our studio with our panel of uh, Bible men. Uh, of course, we got Kevin. He's our evangelist. Uh, he's our Bible encyclopedia. We have uh, John. He's our expert in the book of Proverbs. And, and little old me, I'm just kind of the third wheel here on the rail, having a good time with these folks. And we're going to spend the next hour with you looking into an interesting topic, Kevin, that I was talking with someone this week about, you know, the hope of going to heaven, the hope of having a relationship with God. And they were saying, yep. I, and what I'm counting on is just like the 10 fingers on my hand, those 10 commandments. I, I, I think God gave us the 10 commandments that if we would do our very best to keep the 10 commandments or the law, that that's the way that, uh, I'm going to be okay with God. And I've been doing this since I was a little boy is a good, good gentleman, a real fine uh, man, good businessman, but a lot of hope in those 10 commandments. And I was thinking, you know, we call this show. What is truth? And on the, what is truth show at one point, Jesus says, I am the truth. I am the way and the truth and the life. And, and the Bible says at one point that the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ, giving us the indication there is a difference between the two. And I think the difference may be eternal when you come down to it. Amen. So, Kevin, yeah. you're on the streets there. What, what are the things you hear on the streets when you talk to people? Well, people, people who really do trust in the law, they get confused and think the law was given. Here's, here's a list of things. If we keep these, we're going to make it in heaven. Right. right? But... Uh, I, I don't think people are really being honest with themselves. Half of the people, probably, I don't know, I never took a real survey, but most of the, most of the folks, if you ask them, well, how, so you keeping the law, are you? Oh, yeah, yeah, I keep, the, I keep the Ten Commandments. Can you name them for me? And they can't do it. So I'm like, yeah. how can you keep it if you can't even name them? You don't even know what they are. Where is it, Mike, where it says the, the law is uh, the task maker? Was our schoolmaster? Oh, that's in the book that's of Galatians. Galatians. Our, uh, in, our, test, in our, our schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. Three Galatians, well, and, and people, people need to understand that that Paul tells us, wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ, that we might be justified by faith. Folks, you have to understand that once sin, you sinned, and if you're keeping the, what's called the Ten Commandments, and Jesus tells us, and He said it for this purpose: if you look at a woman with lust in your heart. You've sinned. You committed adultery. If you hate for no reason someone, you, you commit murder in your heart. So it's impossible. The law is impossible to get you to heaven. Only one could could do that. And that's what Jesus was pointing out. You, you know, it's, it's a great it's a great model for how the Lord would like you to live once you take his gift of salvation, which is his son. But it's not. It's not, th I tell people all the time, think about this. If, if there was a weight system, then God would have to, he, he'd have to be a respecter of persons. Balance. And he is not. Right, exactly. Yeah. Because if, if, if I go to heaven the same day as Kevin, I ain't going to make it. If it's, oh, yeah, if it's made yeah, by that. Yeah, yeah. Right? But because we're saved under the grace of Jesus Christ, we're all in. And again, we talk about it on the show all the time. Christians also need to understand they will be judged. It's a second judgment. And then your deeds will be brought, will, will be brought up. So it's just two judgments. But the first judgment to get into heaven is, ex is accepting God's gift of grace. Yeah. I'm thinking of the law now, and, and it is in the Bible. I mean, we can find a chapter in the Bible sure. where God lays the law out. Do you know what chapter that is? It's in Exodus, Exodus 24. 20. 20. 20. Exodus 20. Ah, 24. Exodus 20. Yeah, that's right. So, so the, those talk. Ten Commandments can be found in the second book of the Bible, the book of Exodus, chapter 20. And in verse 1, it says, God spake all these words, and he said, I am the Lord thy God. Uh, thou shalt have no other gods before me. I guess that would be the first one. Uh, the second one, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heaven above or in the earth beneath or in the water under the earth, thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, to these staff Jews, nor serve them, for I, the Lord uh, thy God, I'm a jealous God. Uh, and then he says in verse uh, 7, the third commandment, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh uh, his name in vain. And then the fourth one, he says in verse 8, remember the Sabbath day, to keep it holy. Mm -hmm. And then he goes on later and he says the fifth one in verse 12, honor thy father and thy mother, 
that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Then he goes on, he names the sixth one, thou shalt not kill. The seventh one is thou shalt not commit adultery. The eighth one is in verse 15, thou shalt not steal. The ninth one is in verse 16 of Exodus 20, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. And then the tenth one is almost like a mini paragraph, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. And there's that tenth one. But I'm thinking of it historically. He gave those ten commandments after he delivered them out of bondage at the Passover. So it's not like he gave them first and said, now if you're good, I'll deliver you out of Egypt. I delivered you first, and then I gave them. It's kind of like we have them out of order. It's yeah, kind of like a, putting the cart before the horse. That's a great point. And here I am, a Christian on a radio show, and I said it was Exodus 24. So there you know how I feel about the Ten Commandments. <laughs> I mean, I, lo I, lo I love them. Every word of God is important to me, amen, amen. but it's not the Ten Commandments. Right, right. You must be born again is where I'll know if you ask me to go. That's, that's what I know. But you're, you're absolutely right, Mike, and people need to understand that the Passover— when when God, we all know, took took, took the first took the lamb, took the lamb and, and the blood, and then the the angel of death passed over the Jews' homes while he took the firstborn, and they were all saved because they saved. trusted what God said about the lamb. And some did the blood of the lamb. And some didn't do and it. Some did. Some didn't do it. They said, Ah, this guy Moses didn't do it. And even though they were a Jew, it, it happened. But it was a Passover, and that's and that's saving. That's a picture of the Lamb of, the, of God, of the, Lamb of, God of, of the Lord Jesus yeah. Christ. And that's a great point because they were saved from death, the death angel. They were pulled out and brought into the wilderness, the world, and then he gave them the marching orders. The march so this, is this, is, this, is, this is a good way to live. This but is the way I've I want you to live. already saved you. Right. Just like I baptism we were talking about Great before. Point. Great they point. were baptized afterwards too. There you go. They were saved first. They were uh, given the Ten Commandments and they were baptized uh, actually, just before the Ten Commandments. Yeah. I got right. out of order there. That's right. But that's a real that's good point because we were just baptized. talking about that. A lot of folks will say, well, I keep the Ten Commandments. Name them. They can't. Right. <laughs> so, There's you know, a guy on the street. Read... What's his name? Ray Comfort? Yes. That's his ministry. The guy from Australia. And Questions I've seen like his that. video. You can go online, folks. Go to YouTube and, and type in the na name Ray Comfort, C-O-M-F-O-R-T, and you'll see him on the streets with a cameraman asking people questions. Oh, I keep the Ten Commandments, and he'll ask him, can you name them? <laughs> no. The guy can only name three no, of them. Yeah, yeah. How can you keep three yeah. and not know <laughs> seven? Yeah. So, so you were saying, what do people say on the street? The other thing they'll say is, well, well my father's a pastor, so I'm good, right? <laughs> so he's keeping or, them for me. I go to church, <laughs> yeah. so I'm good. Yeah, right. right? Yeah. Or, you know, yeah. all these other things. My father's on the radio, so I'm good. Yeah. You better step it up, son. <laughs> you know? So, uh, you know, God said that uh, in Romans 2, verse 11, for there is no respect of persons with God. Mm -hmm. You don't get a special dispensation. Thank you don't God. get a special ticket in, like you were just saying, about, you know, we're all on the same Thank level. Thank God. Yes. Where would the so, bottom line be? If God, if God had a merit system uh, based on what you did in life and your works, what would the bottom line be? I mean, you'd have guys out there like, like Sturgeon and you know all the, the, the Billy Sunday and whatnot. Right, right. Then there's little. Where's that border going to be? Was it? Where's that line going to be? It's brilliance. What he did is brilliance. It's God's brilliance. It's it's the mind of God, where he knows this. What makes it a one on one relationship? I know John can't be a Mike. I know Mike can't be a Kevin. Kevin we uh, but I, but I love him for him the way you love me for me. Yeah. It's a one on one relationship, and he made it so simple to get into the kingdom they call it the simplicity of christ yes people really get confused don't they yes they do and it's easy we were talking earlier about it's easy to tell people you got to keep the law you got to keep the law there's people that preach that and then people that follow they're fo following error it's not in the bible mm -hmm. you know so uh the next verse after that in romans 2 12 uh for all have sinned Without the law shall also perish without the law. And as many as have sinned in the law shall be judged by the law. For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. So if you could keep the Ten Commandments, if you could be perfect, 
you could get into heaven, but nobody can do that. Nobody can. Nobody and can Jesus, keep them. Jesus and most people that. can't even name them. And, and so I think, how can you keep and, them? And, I think, and you know, some people will say, well, only the Lord Jesus Christ could keep those Ten Commandments. And I agree. Well, I'll agree. I agree. But it was never God's intention. It was never God's intention that these Ten Commandments uh, is going to get you, is going to get you into heaven, because it's works, right? And it's it's your it's your heart. I mean, if you're not coveting and, and whatnot, and and you're doing all, all everything you're supposed to do, but it was not His intention to to say this is your ticket to me. This is you got to believe. I'd like you to walk this way because people get it wrong when Jesus said, yeah. "If you have lust in your heart." You've already sinned. Well, Jesus say, made when he did that, he a, made made the law even tougher. Right. He, right. He exactly. made it even tougher. He pointed it to out from the Exodus physical 20. to the spirit. That's yes. right. And, and, and he pointed so, out if because you can't measure up to the Exodus twenty. You surely can't measure up to what Jesus. And, and he was telling put it, on and the and table. he was saying he was saying that to the Jews and he was saying that to the Pharisees, um, and, and and letting them know it says it's not by your works, it's not by the things that you do it's by your heart and do you believe yeah so faith, faith. faith. so why was faith. the law given we you already stated Schoolmaster. galatians three twenty four. um i like galatians four twenty one. uh i i'll ask people this i'm like tell me ye that desire to be under the law because there's people that desire to be under the law there are many groups out there there's uh sabbath keepers there's you know, those are uh, Seventh-day Adventists. There are uh, different religions that they try to keep the law. But here it says, tell me, ye des you desire to be under the law? Do you not hear the law? You're not going to measure up. You're not going to make it. If you hear the law, the law, there's a lot of stuff in the law. And if you, we, we just read if you, be, that you're supposed to be a doer, not a hearer that, only, not, deceiving that, your own that, self. That's an interesting point you're bringing up because... When you say a lot of stuff in the law, it turns out that if you continued reading after the 20th chapter of Exodus, yes. when he lays down those 10 uh, commandments, which God himself with his finger wrote on tables of stone. Mm -hmm. But then later on, he allowed Moses to write ordinances in his own handwriting called the handwriting of ordinances. And Moses would write Exodus 21, 22, 23, all the civil laws, how the judges would work inside the nation. And then he would get the Le Levites, write the book of Leviticus, and uh, this is how you do this offering and that one. And somebody totaled it up. There's 613 various ordinances and laws right. con contained in that Old Testament. And so if you're going to be a law keeper like you were reading in that one verse, have you not heard the law? I mean, you're talking about yeah. trying to keep 613 particulars. Uh, for example, keeping the Sabbath, which and I know God put it in a spiritual sense there. You know, you go on this particular day, but then he added all those additional things in Exodus 21 through 23, book of Leviticus. You can't kindle a fire. You can't walk more than the distance from Bethany to Jerusalem. I mean, he put limits on it so that, because if you're walking too far, but if you, if I keep you from walking too far, you're going to stay home. You're going to be with your family. You're going to rest with your mother and your father. You're going to honor the Sabbath as a family. All those things he put in, if we're going to really keep the Sabbath, it's there's a difficult. lot of particulars. Yeah. Yes. I, yeah. Is, like, is this a smorgasbord Sabbath? I pick here and there what I want to do. Maybe I'll just keep the Saturday, but I'm not interested in kindling the fire because no. my, com my internal combustion if, engine kindles the fire. If you offend at one point, yep. you're guilty of all. The right. scriptures That's say right. in James, That's right? right? So... What is it, though, that makes people think, I'm going to keep the Ten Commandments, and they can't recite them? They surely can't <laughs> recite 600 of them, Yeah, right? Right. So, and what is it that, like this verse says, you desire to be under the law, do you not hear it? And the scriptures say, be ye doers. Be ye doers, and not hearers only, deceiving your own self. So, so the question is, is what is it that makes people think that they're keeping the commandments when they're really not. They're deceiving, just like the scripture said, deceiving their own selves. It's not somebody else deceiving you. You deceive your own self. Yes. How is that possible that yes. you could deceive your own self in the thinking you're keeping the commandments well, when you're really not? Well, You I know would, you're not. Well, Don't you have a conscience? Uh, well, I, w I would say this. Uh, like the prophet Jeremiah wrote in the 17th chapter of the heart, our heart is deceitful yeah 
uh, above all things. And, and one of the things we do is we deceive ourselves. Now, now, thankfully, when one does apply the blood of the lamb and get that Passover salvation on the new birth, because, you know, what was done back in Exodus is now done in the New Testament by applying the blood of Jesus Christ to your heart by faith. I mean, that's, that's what I did one day in 1993 by faith. I recognized, okay, Lord, you died on that cross and you weren't just dying for the world. You were dying for me. And if I accept you and receive this by faith, you will take me to be your child. At that point I got saved, but it's not like I instantly died. I still had a mind and I still have a heart and my heart can still get confused. I made, by the way, that was 1993, just to show you in 1999, I made some bad investments where my heart deceived me and I lost a whole bunch in the market crash at 2000. So, so my heart, I'm a new creature, but I've, I'm now two people. I've got a new man and an old man and the old man, the book of Colossians, Paul was writing and he was saying in, in chapter 2, verse 20, if, if you're dead with Christ, in other words, when, when I received Christ as my Savior, it was like God says, okay, Michael, you died, and now the new man comes forth. I want you to live in the new man. But unfortunately, many days, I, I answer to the old man. If you've been dead with Christ uh, well, from the rudiments of the world, why are you living in the world? Are you subject to these ordinances? You're back to these laws again. Touch not, taste, taste not, not, handle yeah. not. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, uh, go to church on this day. Don't, don't, don't go to church on that day, which are commandments and doctrines of men. Now notice what he said in verse 23, Kevin, which in these things have indeed, oh, a show of wisdom in, in will worship and humility uh, neglecting the body. See, I, I do this, but it's not in any honor to God. It's to the satisfying of my flesh. My old man wants to see that I measure up somehow. And if I can take a bunch of things and say, I'm going to keep these, these are the ones I'm not going to worry about. I mean, Hey, look, I got a kindle of fire. It's cold in December. I'm not going to not kindle a fire in my house. I'm going to forget that part of the Sabbath, but these other parts I'm going to keep. And that makes me feel pretty good. It's kind of like little Jack Horner. I'm a look, look what a good boy am I? I'm kind of polishing my apple in the corner. Maybe you're That's, progressing. Hey, I'm doing better than I did last year. Oh, like I'm, yeah, I'm evolving. Yeah. I'm getting right. better. Yeah. 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 Right. You know, again, going back to Galatians, if you read a couple of those, but the scripture hath concluded all are under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But Correct. before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith, which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law is adverse. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us into Christ that we might be justified by faith. Yes. But after that faith is come, we're no longer under a schoolmaster that's correct for ye are all children of god by faith in christ jesus Amen. going to that's colossians a great first it's a great a it's a great, great verse. verse say that again and it says we are all children of god by faith in christ jesus and read it and read go and then go back up go back up the ladder backwards yeah. wherefore that if the faith come we are no longer under a schoolmaster who's a yeah. schoolmaster it yeah. was to bring us unto christ it was to show us what sin was if there was never a law of god how would we know what sin was? Well, yeah, and it did two things because Paul in Romans uh, was saying that Jesus or God, the father, whoever spoke to Adam in the garden probably was a theophany of Jesus told him in the day thou sinnest, thou shalt die. And of course, what happened is Adam sinned and, and he gave him a spiritual day, a thousand years, and he died 930 years later. But, but all of Adam's children then came out. And every single one of them with a sin nature at some point in their life sinned and they died. And the death rate, as far as I know, from the time of Adam is one to one. Everybody born died. Boom, 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 That's boom, right. boom, boom, boom. And, and death. And and one point, Paul says, look, although the law wasn't in the world until 1490 B.C. or, or when God gave it to Moses, it was sin was in the world and people were dying. All the law did technically was allow God to put a price tag on their sins. Right. He was yeah. able to say, look, you owe me. How much do I owe you? Look, you owe me. Trust Wait. me, you owe me before that. But now I can actually charge it. Here's a charge for this one. Here's a charge for them. He's running up the account and saying, this is how much you owe me. This is, and the wages of sin of death. Go back to Colossians yeah. 2, Mike, um, 13. And you, listener yep. being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh 
hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Well, how would you know what a trespass is if you didn't know what sin was, if you didn't know what the law was? Correct. Right? But 14, listen to this. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, yes. which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Do you, do you realize this? Paul's telling us this is the mind of God. He knew that we'd be able to keep these commandments. Right, right. He knew we wouldn't be able to walk right. like he desired us to walk. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us. Yep. The laws that were against us, they were contrary to us. We are bent to a sin nature. God is saying over here, you want to get close to me? You can't even come close to these 10 points over here, along with the other Levitical laws. Yeah, and, and Paul, and that you're writing in your Colossians, right? Right. In the book of 2 Corinthians, he said, he said uh, in the third chapter of 2 Corinthians, he said, uh, we, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves. Verse 5, our sufficiency is of God. And God made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, which is the Old Testament, but of the Spirit. That's the New Testament. For the letter, the Old Testament killeth, but the Spirit giveth life. Verse 7, the ministration of death written and engraven in stones. The, the, the Ten Commandments, basically, when he hands it to you, it's like it's a death sentence. He's handing you something that you saying, I know you can't keep it. Which, which kind of can frustrate us if I didn't understand the fact that there's going to be what Jesus promised, the resurrection. The resurrection of our body. Mm -hmm. And our new body that's going to be resurrected isn't going to be a fleshy body. It's going to be a celestial heavenly body. And the new body is able to keep the Ten Commandments. And you remember how we saw how God gave the Ten Commandments after he brought them out of... Uh, Egypt. He, he delivered them in chapter 12 of Exodus. He gave them the commandments in chapter 20 purposely to let the Jews know, listen, this deliverance I've done for you is temporary. The greater deliverance is going to be my son. And by giving you these laws, I'm going to show you, you're going to struggle keeping them. And by the way, Christian, 2000 years later, when you get saved, I'm going to still give you the Ten Commandments as saying, look, this is a good way for you to live, to show a testimony as a Christian. You shouldn't commit adultery. You shouldn't steal. You shouldn't bear false witness. You shouldn't covet. I want you to do that. But I also know you're going to struggle as much as those Jews did. It's at the resurrection, the, the blessing and the holy first resurrection. When I raise you in new bodies, you're going to be able to keep these things exactly the way I want. Yeah, remember my friend Wally Tope. He said, I don't go ba to become a sheep. I go ba because I am a sheep. Yeah, right. So they were already saved from death in Israel out of Egypt. And God said, here's the way you should live. Here's how you should walk. In Ephesians 2, 8, 9, a lot of folks know that. That's a very famous great, verse great couple verses for by yeah. grace you saved through faith yeah. and that not of yourselves it is the gift of god not of works lest any man should boast so now we're talking remember salvation comes first yes look what comes after verse 10 verse 10 comes after everybody stops short there don't they <laughs> right for we are his workmanship see he's working on us and how did he, how did we become his workmanship created in christ jesus A new creation unto good works yeah. not good works created this new creation right. ship we're created right. unto good works That's right which god hath before ordained that we should walk in them, in them. to the best yeah. of our ability yes. the best of our abilities that, that we, now, we don't have a license to sin but, the, but what really blows me away the deep teachings of scripture maybe it's too deep to get into is it, i'm going back to Col colossians 2 14 blotting out the handwriting of ordinances mike what you yeah, said all yeah. the ordinances listen to this that was against yeah, us. Oh, sure. Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. God wrote those ordinances. Some through the hands of Moses, right? Right. But and then and, and then he says, which were contrary to us. To show you, to you show need us, to be saved. You can't show us we need to save you. Exactly. You can't do all this stuff. Exactly. Right? You don't know you don't know you like strawberry if you if you never had cho chocolate. If you know you know what I'm saying? You have to yeah. you have to know the difference. It shows us it's our schoolmaster. You mean to tell me the law is a schoolmaster because we it's to show us what sin is. Think about it. Think about it. What would you 
every man does now leans onto his own understanding and, and determines what's right and, and what's what wrong. And determines right what's right and what's wrong god doesn't like that he wants he wants to be specific i want to let you know what ticks me off and what doesn't all right and then was it peter that says well who can who then can be saved Sure. And, 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 and Christ says, well, well, God, everything's possible. Yeah, it's impossible for men. Impossible for men. My father but my father is, everything, everything's possible. So again, thank God yeah. that he does not have a point system. <laughs> well, Can you imagine? Look, I just buried my, my mother-in-law. And about nine days before she passed, she took the Lord. And in my heart, Amen. and in my heart, um, in my heart, uh, she did. Everybody says, well, you know, we, only the Lord knows her heart. She, she looks serious to me. Okay. She took the Lord. One of the reasons why she had a problem with it was because she said, you mean you could live your whole life? And, you know, I was never bad, but I was never godly. And now I'm hypocritical to do that. I said, no, you're not. And teaching, and she took the Lord. Right. My sure. father, my father, with your help, maybe a month before he passed away, he took the Lord. Sure. And I know for, for a fact because he was just blown away by everything. Right. If he, were judged based on the law. My mother-in-law was, 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 was safe for nine days. Four of them, she was unconscious. Sure, sure. So if, the, if, if it was based on a point system, they wouldn't get in. But you have breath in this thing called life, your flesh. With your last breath, if you go ahead and you take the Lord seriously, you're in. Now, when you get there, you'll be judged and you won't be happy with your, with your report card, right? But but that is the salvation. That's what's so wonderful. Amen. Listen to what is truth. We're, we're discussing the concept of, of what's known commonly as the law. And from God's standpoint, the law, we often think of as the Ten Commandments, and they are the great uh, moral, uh, spiritual law that, curiously, is is going to reign in heaven. I mean, where all of us will be like the Lord Jesus Christ. He never broke any of those laws, did he? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He, he, he lived perfectly to that, right. and he's trying to prepare us in his image to do the same. But we're all struggling down here, and thankfully, he's willing to take... Uh, the penalty of the law for us on Calvary's cross and give us a free pardon and be our Passover lamb so that uh, the death of our soul now will be passed over by God as he gives us eternal life. And uh, we're going to be talking about a little bit more of the specifics in the next half hour. This is an important topic because it seems like, Kevin, in the world, the majority of religions are always telling people, to keep some standard or some set of laws. Maybe it's God's, maybe it's God's plus a couple other things like the Pharisees did. But what God, God is saying is, hey, leave that schoolmaster and come to my son. Jesus says, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. We're going to continue this in the next half hour. If you want to visit our website, it's www.graceandtruthchurch, spell it all out, dot O-R-G. And we'll be back with you right after the station break. Amen. Welcome back to the program, a lively discussion here, uh, considering the fact that, you know, it's interesting in, in that one passage when Jesus first comes on the scene in the Gospel of John, it says the law was given by Moses and the Jewish and people. You keep it. And the and Jewish people it, think very highly of yeah. Moses. Yes. They, they think of him as the prophet of prophets, the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. There's a, there's a greater law than, than those Ten Commandments and any of those ordinances that are written. The one that kept the law, the one that is the perfection of grace, that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, the one that can give you pardon. Yeah, go ahead. Well, when, when in, I think it was in John when the man comes up and says, what do I what do, I do to, to, uh, for eternal life? And said, love the Lord thy God, where all thy, their mind, their heart, and their, their soul. Yeah, that's right. And your neighbor as each other. That's not in the Ten Commandments. That's not specifically spelled out in the Ten Commandments. Although Paul and Jesus give you the impression that's basically what the Ten Commandments are trying to say. Exactly. To love the Lord exactly. thy God is the first uh, table of stone. Honor him. Yeah. Honor his Sabbaths and yeah, everything. Matthew 22, And then everything after that, your neighbor. And, and Matthew your, your 22. Neighbor. Yeah, Matthew, Matthew 22, 22 is that. That's where it is, yeah. I believe that's the, that's the verse you're talking about. It's sure, sure. Course, isn't it? And, 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 and a lawyer uh, came to him in verse 35, mm -hmm. and this is a lawyer studying the, the, the laws of God, the book of Moses. He's not a civil lawyer. He's a religious lawyer. And he asked Jesus a question, and he said, Master, which is the great commandment 
in the law. And then Jesus answered and said, well, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This is the first and the great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself on these two commandments. Hang all the law and all the prophets, all what my father been trying That's to right. show us down through the centuries. He, he, give me, again, give me it makes sense. <laughs> give me a testimony how you're doing that. Yeah. You're, you're keeping the law. Sometimes, Come on, I want to hear the testimony. Sometimes, I'll ask people. You're it, keeping the law. Go ahead. Tell it, me Tell me about how you're doing that. Exactly. How you're lo loving the Lord with all your heart, mind, and soul, and how you love your neighbor just like you love yourself. Tell me about it. But Tell it, me about it. I want a testimony in scripture. <laughs> many times you have to take it literal. The Lord is making you literal. But sometimes when Jesus Christ says this, you, you need to have the, the wisdom to understand. I get it. Yeah. Basically, he's talking to the Jews. This is Matthew. It's all about the Old Testament and their laws and whatnot. And he just compiled all, what'd you say, 600 and whatever 13 ordinances, of them, yeah. 13 uh -huh. plus the Ten Commandments or with the Ten Commandments. And he made them and he said, hangs off these two. What he's saying here is, for crying out loud, you know, this, this is to love the Lord your God. Well, there's ways to do that. The way to do that is to please him and, 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 and walk as best you can in his law and his commandments. Yep. This shows your love and show your love for God because he created your neighbor too. Yep. And love him as the Lord loves him. Yep. He goes on to say, he gave us the parable. You did it last Sunday. If, if with the, um, the, the guy that was owed, the judge, he owed all the talents and he 10, went ahead, the 10 talents, talents and he, and the, and the, and the, and the king, the, the guy, the king forgave him or the judge forgave him. And then he went and saw a guy that owed him a buck 50 and he took him by the neck and, <laughs> and, and, he says, and, he says, and, and then, and then the judge says, he says, I, I forgave you all this since you have shown compassion as well. Yeah. <laughs> many, many. And that guy's literally, and this is, we're, idi we're, we're, we're idiots we, in, in many, many ways. <laughs> I mean, that's why God looks at us filthy rags. That's why Proverbs says the Lord looks at you as three ways, either you're wise or you're you're simple or you're a fool yeah you're just you're wise if you get it if you fear god it's the beginning of wisdom he looks at you as if you if you have a respect for god doesn't matter if you have a phd doesn't matter what you do for a living if you fear the lord god that is the beginning of wisdom yes. he counts it for wisdom what a deal but if yeah. you could have a phd and one on say, ain't no god i made this money you're a fool. Yeah. And if you're somebody like look man i you know that's fine i just want i just want to find myself a girl tonight you're simple yeah he has no use for you. He loves you. He'll let you come to him. He'll but he has still, no use for you. It's easier for him, I think, to draw the simple one than the fool. The fool right. is right. really arguing against God because in his heart it says in Psalm 14, kind of saying, "There's no God." I mean, we That's right. we just evolved. We we don't have to worry about an afterlife. There's no soul. I'm just gonna eat, drink, and be merry and do what I want okay. this life. And the simple person is still, well, I'm not sure. sure but and yeah. so maybe, right, maybe like like what you were talking about, your father mm -hmm. and your mother-in-law, mm -hmm. and and with both of them, I would think of them. They lived a life in simplicity they weren't trying to harm right. people they weren't maybe trying to love god they're just navigating through life and then at the very end uh when when it's getting close and they're realizing this is the end i'm going to step through the door you brought them some bible and they believed their faith came by hearing the word of god they were simple and were willing to stand still for the word of god maybe they feel what do i got to lose i i don't know we we, we don't they we listen don't to you say a few right things. that's but, the key but the three of us have witnessed to people that are fools oh, and they evolve yeah, they, to a scorner. They scorn. They get, they, you know, they, yeah. they're fools. They're just, they're just foolish. Uh, they, they just, they just, uh, they don't want to hear it. They've, they've drink, they drank the educational Kool-Aid, especially of this country. And then they get to a point where they scorn. Yeah. Where they scorn, where they belittle you. Uh, it's why Peter says, we have not believed fables. Love you, divide fables, yeah, yeah. but that's what you. Do. Oh, what do you believe in Jesus Christ? What do you believe in Santa Claus too? You get that kind of stuff. That's a scorner. Well, and the, and thankfully, again, and on what is truth, we do all the time. This book has authenticated itself down through the centuries, and some of the best minds that have honestly approached this book, like uh, Sir William Albright and Dr. Simon Greenleaf, and and the many people that have looked at it honestly, have come away with wow. This book was written by God. This is not a human book. They started the as unbelievers. They started as unbelievers. And I believe yeah. anyone that would approach this book with an honest heart and said, I'm going to let the chips fall where they may, they're all going to land on God's side with that, Jesus that, Christ. That's right. But you were, you were mentioning, Kevin, that there's a passage that um, 
I think, I don't know if Ray Comfort uses it on the street, but I know you do a lot. That's Romans chapter three. And when you're out there in the streets and you're trying to uh, talk to the Trying folks, to reason with folks and get go. them to understand that the, um, well, Ray Comfort does that a lot. He'll ask questions, get them to think for themselves, right? Yeah. And get um, them to think like, why do I, why do I believe what I believe? Yeah. What is it? Why am well, I clinging to this? Yeah. Uh, so what, what, what Ray Comfort does, if you've ever seen him, he'll, he'll get them, ask them questions. You ever lie? Did you ever fornicate with somebody? So, and then at the end, Ray Comfort will say, so you're telling me that you, you, you think you're going to get something like you're going to yeah. get to heaven and you're a lying, fornicating, whatever, you <laughs> yeah, know, thief. whatever those, yeah, yeah, yeah stolen thief, some things right? at the, at the... and you're, you're, what you are is a lawbreaker. You're not a law keeper. Yeah. As soon as you break one law, I don't care what it is. You go to, you rob a bank, you lie to somebody, you steal from somebody. What does that make you? When you steal, it makes you a thief. Yes, yes. Right. It, it doesn't make you a good person that made a mistake. Yeah. It makes you a thief. You're a thief. You're a liar. You're whatever. That's that's what the law does. Convincing Paul the Apostle. You. Yeah. The, it, it, that's why that scripture, Romans 4, says that, tell me. You that desire to be under the law, do you not hear the law? <laughs> if you're not do, listening, do, are you not I'm paying saying. attention to the law? <laughs> yeah. And Paul the apostle said, "Look, <laughs> the law is a death sentence. Yeah, you're the under a death, of death sentence. Yeah. And that's yeah. why. That's why in Leviticus there were all the ordinances where if somebody says, you know, I've sinned against the Lord, and he says, okay, if you've done this, you come up with a lamb, you come up with an ox, depending on your sin, depending if it's a peace offering, a burnt offering, There's or whatever it might be. There is a penalty for sin, so they had the Ten Commandments, and they had." Uh, and people need to understand this. This is what the Jewish law is all about. This was a picture. That's good. Right. That's good. So it's a death sentence. Yes, it the is. So wait, let me just What's think about Wait a second. Wait, let's put this together now. Yeah. So, so here I am. I'm a Jew. I'm living in one of the 12 tribe areas and not far from the temple. And I commit a sin. And now it tells me I have to bring an offering. It's a death sentence. And God says, look, instead of you dying, I'm going to let this animal die in your hey, place. There yes. you go. <laughs> and so that's, that's how and, it and works. Something's dying because something's of your gotta, sin. Something's got to die because of your sin. Yeah. Something innocent. Yeah. Something sinless. And it's yeah. not An animal something can't that sin. you can do. Right. You're not the one that kills right. the animal. Yeah. It has right. to be the priest. And Jesus Christ is the high priest. That's right. and, and the animal is Jesus Christ. He's not an animal, but he's called the Lamb, the of, Lamb God, of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. So, so he laid down his life so that we may live. He was, he was just, and he justified us the ungodly yes so that we could have eternal he took our, life he took our place he laid down his life for us and one other thing i'm thinking about because so the old testament jew he he the wages of sin is death or, or the law is administration of death and and so that all this death is occurring but the, the blood must have really flowed at that temple yeah between the oxes and the lambs uh, whew, a lot of cleanup had to be yeah. done there uh, and it was just a portrait of all this sin is causing death but now the law is administration of death and I think about uh, us with that law, and it's it, what he's trying to do with it is to crucify our old self. He's trying to use it to get rid of the old self so the new self will live in grace. I'm trying to use the law to show you, look, you can't keep it, so let that old man die and yeah. now live under grace. Move to the next yeah. level. Well, yeah. I, I worked in a, as a young, right out of high school, I got this really good paying job. Well, yeah. I didn't know that it was, a, it was a slaughterhouse, so they had to pay high. But as soon as I saw all the blood and guts and, and, and the animals going, Ooh, it I didn't eat meat for three months. <laughs> yes. I, 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 I couldn't. So I'm, I'm thinking of in the Old Testament, what if you were the guy that had to slit the throats of all these animals? Yeah. There's blood going everywhere. It's all over your clothes. Yeah. It was the same yeah. thing at that job. The guys yeah. showed me how to do it. They gave me a demonstration. I worked there for five minutes. I'm that kid. Yeah. I put the coat on. I put the boots on. I saw what they wanted me to do. And I said, I'm sorry. I can't do this. I walked sure. out. That's these right. guys had sure. blood all over them and That's stuff. Right. And I'm thinking of the priest. Yep. In the Old Testament, it's not a lovely thing to look at. It's yeah. not something that you aspire to. I'm thinking even Adam and Eve. Here they are in innocence in the garden. And God said, you can do whatever. Just don't do this. Yeah. And they did it. And God, God had to kill the animal the and cover them yeah. with coats of skin. Yes. It wasn't them that could do it. They no. couldn't do it. They it's tried. too late. They, they tried, by the way, with fig leaves. Yes, you know, but you, it's too late. You, but that's a picture of religion. I'm yes. trying to cover my sin with yeah. my own words. And that's human nature. Yeah. When you you put your hand in the cookie jar as a little kid and you eat the cookie, 
it's too late. You can't put the cookie back. <laughs> you know, right, but right, human right. nature says, oh, I want to put the, I want to put the cookie back. Yeah. You I want to make this better. It's too late. You Kevin, already broke the law. You put a, you, a light one off in my head. Just what you're saying is, that's why I love this show. It's, it's more for me than for you, listeners. No, it's just, it's just, <laughs> you know, it's just. Back and but, forth. but again, you because know, we're I'm not just, scripted I'm, here except with scriptures. Right, right. And I'm in the book of Numbers now. I just finished Leviticus, and and you wonder and you think about my goodness. And I know some people will criticize that don't know, and they say, what's this all the blood and whatnot? But you just brought, brought up a great point because my and my humorous way i would think all right you got to bring a lamb i said boy if i had livestock in those days and i have 12 lambs i get through three weeks i'd have two left you know because you know it, <laughs> right, but, right but you know kevin you just brought something up you made a picture in my mind i would have to think that look when, when you were a kid remember back up remember when we were kids it was a thing called scared straight Yes, yes. They took a bunch of these these kids, these wise kids, and they brought them to the toughest to jails. The prisons, yeah. And the, and, the, and these guys, and scared the snot out of them yes, straight. Yes, yes. Well, you bring up a great point, because I'm thinking to myself, I was like, I was going to joke. I said I'd be down to two, two lambs. But I think once you see, not only you lose something of value, yep. you see something die, you see, and I didn't, I didn't, I didn't hear it. Yeah. You see it suffer. You hear it whine, and like you did. In the jail. And I think you, you got to go back. You got to go back and say, I don't want. To I don't. Do this I don't want to do this again. I yeah. don't do this. I don't want to do this. It was a I always. Memory. I always. Yeah. I always think, I, you know. And I, and I. And here I am studying scripture for seventeen years. And I think. I said. All right. Here he goes. Another lamb. I was looking at more for money. It's like, oh, this lamb's worth it. There you go. There you go. I'm broke. You know. But no, it's not. It would probably be a horrific experience, a, a disturbing experience, and show and to show you. Guess what? This is this sin business. Is the real deal, and I'm serious about it. And yeah. now that now that I think about it, now that you brought it up that way. And so here I am. I'm one of the Sanhedrin, the Pharisees, when Jesus arrives. I've just spent 30 years killing animals. And this one's coming in and said, I'll be the lamb and take it all away. I said, yeah, please. This is the end. I'm with you, man. Yeah. And, and they fought against that. What yeah. is it about human nature that we literally fight against the very thing that would benefit us? The wages, I, I, the wages of sin is death. Yeah, that's what that's what Paul tells us in Rome. Your, your payment for sin is death, and I think until Kevin, I, I always know it, but like you said, that graphic image. That's good, brother. <laughs> you paint it, especially you know, because it's funny because I was in the military, I lived off base, and every once in a while in Kansas, and every once in a while when the wind changed, there was this weird odor in the air, and what it was, it, there was a slaughterhouse, stockyards? it was a stockyard, uh, yeah, there was a yeah. slaughterhouse oh, yeah. there. I didn't even think and of you'd that. See, the smell too, and you'd right? see, yeah. and you'd yeah. see. Uh, and again, you know, uh, you'd see, um, not tractor trailers, but those things with, with those, with those animals in the trucks and you see them looking as you pass them by, you see them looking out like, you know, where are we going? And I would have to think to see that and to know, but in a, in the environment that God made for the Jews with the understanding that it's going to cost you something, I, I, I would have to think, you know, Maybe we can't. Maybe we can't get our mind around it right right now. But maybe we should look at it this way in today's modern America. Okay, you sin, you do something bad, you got to bring a puppy. I love puppies. So, no, nope, you bring that puppy, and it's going to be killed right in front of you. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't. No, no, don't yeah. kill the puppy. I, I, that, that, that mortifies me. Yeah. And maybe say, th th will you do it again? No. Well, that's that's kind of the point, right? Yeah. The point is that you look at that, you don't want it to happen, and God said this is the penalty this is it's sin it hurts people right. it hurts others even it hurts you think, creatures yeah, the animals it hurts it, everything yeah right, yeah right. and these the animals at it was a kosher slaughterhouse so they're they're on a line coming down and all the cows all the way down that line are going oh they yeah, know yeah, it's coming they know right? it's right. Yeah. and and when you're doing sin and all that you know there has to be a payment and these payments were they they didn't do the full payment Right, they just covered up for a short time. So there's sure. another one coming, and it's, another one coming, yeah, sure. and but, another one coming, and it's it's horrible. But God made it that way. Why? Because look, Paul the apostle said you're under a death sentence. Imagine you're on that line coming down well, that line, this, and, and eventually you're going to get to the end of the line, and you're going to have to pay the next. payment yeah, yourself. Yeah, you're yeah. going to pay through death. It's either going to be paid by you. Or, or some, some, other sacrifice. some other sacrifice. And that other sacrifice can only be Jesus Christ. In the, in the so Paul said, we had the sentence of death within ourselves. Right. It's yeah. inside. Right. The problem is you. It's not the law. It's not 
something else. It's you. It's in you. But, the problem is in you. And we had the sentence of death within ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves. How can you trust in yourself I, when you're a law? And I, uh, but I would have to how think, can you trust yourself when you're breaking God's law? How, I, I how would, are you going to reverse that? It's too late. You already broke his law. You're a lawbreaker. You're under the penalty of death. There's no but remission of that sin except through Jesus Christ. And that's why he came to die for your sin, because he's the only perfect payment for that sin. Right, wait, that wait, could cover wait, wait, that wait. Sin. Hold, hold. But listener, get this thought. And I know it might be kind of gross to you and whatnot. And I said the thing about a pump, puppy and it's terrible. But think about the individual in Old Testament times that brings, because uh, at one time they, they, might have, they might have an affection for the lamb, whatever it might be, because they, they, for wool, they didn't use it for food. And now all of a sudden, you don't think you would say, why does that poor little thing have to die for me? Why, why does that poor little thing have to die for me? And if let's say it was something of value, if you wanted to say, can I just be punished? No. Why can't I punish? Why can't I take it? Well, you want to die for it? Why can't you know why? You, you, Even if you die for it, it's not acceptable because you're a sinner and your blood is dirty. And this is what you understand. Now we're getting to what, what you call the Easter season. All right, the Resurrection Sunday is coming up April fourth, and get a I want you to get a good idea. So God has did this pattern, but spiritually now it's Jesus Christ, as Kevin was saying, and it's He has in His veins the blood of God. And it's perfect blood. And now you got to look and say, wait a minute. Fortunately and unfortunately, we don't live in Old Testament times where we could see this where it would shake us up like it shook Kevin up in the stockyards. We don't see what would really shake us up. Now, put yourself over there. And all of a sudden, this, this good guy, this innocent man. Now, John, you sinned. He's going down. Whoa, 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 whoa. I, I could take my own sin. Let me do it. No, you know what? I don't even want you. I don't even want you because your blood is dirty. He's dying for you. This shakes you up. Understand this, Christian. But if you don't receive but it, if you don't receive it, you are and spiritually. Going. He did this right. He did this spiritually, so we don't have to over or he, over he, and he, over he, give a sacrifice. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it says uh, Paul explaining to the Jews uh, just uh, before the temple was destroyed, after Christ had done his great work and and ascended back to heaven he's still trying to wake them up stop with these temple sacrifices and he says um it is not possible this is hebrews chapter 10 verse 4 that the blood of bulls and, and goats. goats should take away sins or turtle doves or lambs or anything you want to sacrifice wherefore when he jesus came into the world he said to his father sacrifice an offering thou wouldest not but a body Hast thou prepared me? Verse 7, uh, then said I, lo, I come. In the volume of the book it's written of, the, of me, I come to do thy will, O God. Uh, he said in verse 9, I come to do thy will, O God. And he taketh away the first, that would be the first uh, order of sacrifices of bulls and goats, uh, that he may establish the second, that's the New Testament, by the which will we are sanctified. Through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And he points back to those priests at the temple still working. And every priest standing daily and ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. This man, Jesus Christ, after he offered one sacrifice for sins forever, he sat down on the right hand of God, verse 14, for by one offering, his perfect offering, he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified, whereof the Holy Ghost is a witness to us. And when we, we tell people this, the Holy Ghost is trying to speak to their mind like he did to your My dad's friend. mind, to your, your mother-in-law's mind. Think about this. This is making sense. And, and then they get to make that decision to trust in the one that made the perfect sacrifice rather than whatever they were doing you, before. You have to know how serious to God the penalty of sin is oh, yeah. to really to really latch on to his gift of grace of Jesus Christ. The more you fear sin, the more you feel your guilt, the more you say, yeah, I'm, I'm just wrong and I deserve, to, I deserve to be punished, the more you love Jesus for taking it for you, the more you feel indebted to Jesus for taking it for you. And and unfortunately today, you know, we have it so easy, and when we say, you know, Jesus died for your sins, people don't really get it because everybody sins. Oh, yeah, we it's live, so common. We live in a, we live in a, God we can't all be say, serious about ah, that. Come yeah. on, man, you know, I mean, it's okay to kill babies, it's okay for same marriage sex, it, you know, it doesn't matter. Evil's called good, or good is called evil. So they don't understand today 
How, so how give them Romans Simmons. 3. Show them. Show them yeah. what God well, says in Romans 3. Can I talk about yeah. separation first? That, yeah. that also a penalty of sin is you separated yourself from God. Yes. Right? Uh, Isaiah says, but your sins and iniquities have separated between you and your God. Yeah. He has turned his face from you that he will not hear you. You're wondering why God doesn't answer your prayers. Maybe it's because there's separation. Jesus Christ came to make peace between yes. you and yes. God. That, Amen. And, and Ephesians Thank Two, you. He, he says that at that time we were without Christ being uh, aliens, That's aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covenants of promise, with no ho having no hope without God in the world. But now Christ Jesus, who sometimes was far off or made nigh by the blood of Christ, he is our peace, who hath made both one and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us. Jesus Christ came to take away the enmity. I think it says down here sure. after that, it says sure. uh, reconcile, reconcile you and God because of your sin through the, through his sacrifice. You know, we, and, you have to believe he did it. And not only that, not only that, you're, you're, you're speaking in a doctrinal theological sense, but God actually did that practically on the day that Christ died. Uh, Matthew recorded that when Jesus uh, and Matthew 27, when he cried with a loud voice and yielded up the ghost, and he finally died, it says in verse 51, and behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. And back in that temple, there was a big, huge curtain like you'd have on Broadway, only thicker, a huge curtain between where God's Ark of the Covenant was in the most holy place. And the people were outside. And that veil was the separation between God and the people. And when Christ paid the penalty, God ripped that veil from the top to bottom as a sign to show the way is now opened. The Amen. separation and yeah. peace with God. Amen. You want yeah. peace? Yeah. You want peace with God? You need Jesus Christ. So uh, you asked about Romans 3. There you we go. basically have everybody is guilty and the purpose of the law is that every mouth may be stopped because we are guilty so as it is written there is none righteous no not one there's none that understandeth there is none that seeketh after god we were talking about oh well, i'm going to keep the 10 commandments and people don't even know what they are <laughs> they, they don't even they don't understand yeah they are all gone out of the way they are together become unprofitable there's none that doeth good no, no not, not one, one. And then later on, here's the purpose of the law. If you, uh, verse, uh, chapter 3, verse 19. Now we know that whatsoever things the law says, it says to them who are under the law that every mouth may be stopped and all of the world may become guilty before God. So, so, so all the world. In other words, no matter what religion you're trying to keep, well, the Pharisees all found world, that everybody, I mean, no everybody. matter what, no matter what your religion yep. is, Doesn't matter. if you're religious or irreligious, if, if you're, you know, one of those Sunday, Saturday worshipers and a guy who never goes to church at all and has nothing to do, the law is going to find all of us guilty. Everybody. Everybody. Does, doesn't matter. No exceptions. Yep. Therefore, and then even the law, the one that thinks they're keeping the law, therefore, by the deeds of the law, there shall be no flesh justified in his sight. For by the law is the knowledge of sin. Amen. There you go. And yeah. in verse 23, for all of sin then comes short of the glory of God. Say it again, Say it again Kevin. Again. But what for we're by supposed the law to be is the knowledge is, of sin. Is verse 24, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, who, who God had set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness, Jesus Christ's righteousness for the remissions of sin that are past. So, so now when it says Jesus comes with grace and truth, it's interesting. So, so we're uh, justified freely by the grace and the truth is the law is not going to cut it is what he's telling you. And, right. and so yeah. stop clinging to the law right. and cling to Jesus Christ. And it's yeah. so easy. John was talking about it's so easy. It's so simple. All you have to do is call out to him. He's already done it. I did it in 93. He, he yep. did it. He yep. did it. It's, it's not what you yeah. can do. It's what he already yeah. did. Yeah. It's a, it's a, there's forever. a guy that used to talk about do and done. Yes. There's religion is do. Do, do, Christianity do, do. is it's done. done. It's done. It's done. It was paid 2,000 years ago. You've got to, listen, listener, you've got to take sin seriously. You have to understand this, this is Satan's world. Jesus says, I leave you now to the prince of this world. Yeah. Wait a minute. I thought Jesus was a prince. Jesus is not the prince of this he world. Will be. He will be. Yeah. I leave you now to the prince of this world. That disturbed me when I first learned that. And we're in a world right now where in God's eyes, 
good is called evil and, and evil is called good. Yeah. And that's in God's it's eyes. Like and God. you're getting taught in your schools, your children being taught. It's okay to be abortion, same marriage, sex, all these things that God doesn't want. And you, you know, you, you're guilty. <laughs> it, it reminds me of that thing, John, they have a thing you can see on TV, the, the federal debt, ching, ching, it keeps going up, up, and up. That's like the sin yeah. debt of the world is going up you and got, up and up, and it's multiplying, but there's someone that can pay that yeah, debt. That's right, and, and, and guess what? It's coming up. Uh, this is the time of the year where we talk about Jesus' sacrifice and how valuable it is, and when he rose again from the dead, God kept his promise, proving that if, if you take him as your sacrifice, God will resurrect you. Jesus will resurrect you in the last days. Yeah. Listener, take this seriously. Yeah. So, so uh, today's show, we learned that the law is not the way to God. God's son is the way to God. Amen. And like you said, Kevin, it's by grace that he'll save you through faith. You reach out to him with faith. It won't be our works. It won't be our keeping the law. It's the gift of God. Thank gift. you for joining us on the What is Truth program. Uh, catch us on the website, www.graceandtruthchurch.org. And we'll see you next week at 730 right here. And, and do like Jesus said, search the scriptures and you'll know what is truth. Amen.